Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Quick Start course for On One Photo Raw 2023. In this course, we're gonna talk about diving into the program, getting up and running, and how to creatively stylize our photographs with some of the awesome editing tools available inside of Photo Raw 2023. So this first lesson, it's all about just getting our image into the edit module and bringing it to life, stylizing it a bit, modifying the tone, maybe modifying the color, whatever you feel like doing with your image. This lesson is going to showcase how to quickly find a photograph and take it into the edit module and bring it to life. So let's first just find a photograph really quickly and I'll show you how to easily navigate to an image that you want to modify. So whenever we open up the program, we open it up inside of this browse module here, and this is where we're going to be browsing for our images. So what I typically do is I'll head over here to my local drive section. This is going to house any drives that are mounted or that you have inserted into your computer, such as an SD card or an external hard drive, things like that. So I'm right now just selected on this Mac OS. This is just my computer's hard drive, but I'm just going to select this external hard drive, this Lacey external hard drive that I have plugged into my computer. And once I select that, you can see that I have these different folders that are available inside of that hard drive and I can click on them and I can navigate into them. I can also do the same thing. So if I were to go back to that Mac OS, I can also do the same thing by just rolling them open. So I can roll open that hard drive and if I had different folders within these, I could roll that open and see those as well. But we'll just select that quick start course there because we're gonna be modifying these images within the course. So we've navigated to the group of photographs that we want to modify. Let's just select one. Let's start with this wildlife photograph. And to edit it, let's head over to the edit module and I'll just select that button there. <clears throat> So now that we're inside of the edit module, let's talk just a bit about the UI and how we can quickly navigate to some of the tools that we'll be commonly using on our photography. So with this image, I think it would be great just to crop it real quick before we start modifying the actual look of it. So let's head over here to the left side of our screen and this is going to house all of the different tools. This is our tool well section of Photo Raw. And if you hover over a specific tool, it will give you a little video with that tool in action, a little description, and it will also give you a keyboard shortcut that you can use to quickly select that tool. So I want the crop tool right now. So you can see that the crop tool can be grabbed with just C on my keyboard. So I'm just gonna hit C on the keyboard there. And now I have my crop tool on the image. I'm just going to pull in on these corners here just to make the crop a little bit tighter there on the animal. And I think it looks pretty great just like that. I may pull up a little bit on the bottom. Perfect. So we can either head up to the top tool modifier bar, which whenever you select a tool, you'll have this modifier bar, which you can use to manipulate or modify the tool. Let's just choose apply there, but you can also hit enter on your keyboard whenever you're wanting to just apply the crop. So with this wildlife photograph, let's just modify the tone and color a little bit inside of the develop tab. And this develop tab here, this is where we're going to be modifying the sort of foundational look, if you will, of the image. We're not modifying you know, too much of the style uh, of the photograph. We're really just sort of bringing out the particular tones and the colors that we want to see in the image. So in the develop tab, we have a few different sections, but we're going to start primarily and probably just use this one section here, this tone and color section. So in our tone and color section, this is where we're going to be modifying the tone and the color. So right out of the gate here, we have this camera profile menu. And this camera profile menu is only available if you're modifying a raw photograph. So keep in mind that if this menu isn't available to you, it's probably because you're modifying a JPEG or a processed image file. So this would only be available if you're modifying a raw image file because it emulates those camera profiles that are in your camera and they work best in these sort of situations that they are labeled as. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head in here to Vivid and I'm just going to use that Vivid option there just because I want a nice vivid, uh, a bit of contrasted image that we can go then and modify and style. And you can see right out of the gate, if I head down here to this preview button here, and I turn this off and on to show the original and the modified, 
it's doing a great job of just bringing out a bit of the life and some of the light within the image and also adding in some contrast and some color. We can, of course, also view the original and the edited version by just hitting the backslash key on our keyboard. So with this wildlife photograph, I'm probably not going to modify too many of these tone sliders here. Um, obviously, it depends on whatever image you're modifying. And I don't think this image needs really too much. I'm just going to add in maybe a little bit of contrast there. And I might just pull up on the midtones just a little bit so that we can see some of those different details and textures within the photograph. And I think it looks fine. If we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, it's looking great. I don't think we need to modify too much before we style it. So now what we're going to do is just head in the effects tab. So we've brought out sort of the life of the image. Now let's, you know, style it a bit. Let's add on sort of our own unique personal stamp onto the image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a filter. And inside of Photo Raw 2023 now, inside of this filters menu, we now have the option to choose which object or environment or space in that photograph that we want to apply this adjustment or filter to. So let's just modify the animal. And you can see as I hover over this animal option, it will highlight the animal there. And if I select it, it will turn it blue, meaning I've chosen to apply this particular filter to that particular subject. And we can, of course, choose multiple. We can choose none. We can choose all. But I'm just going to choose this animal there. And so what I want to modify on the animal is the texture. I think adding in a bit of detail and some texture into the fur of the animal will really make it pop out from the background. So let's just choose dynamic contrast. And when I choose that dynamic contrast filter, you can see in here, it's added that dynamic contrast filter, which is a great filter for modifying the detail within our scene. But in the filter itself, I can select this option, which will show me the mask of that particular filter. And if I view this, it's targeting that particular subject within the scene. If we are referring to masking, we usually refer, refer to it as white reveals and black conceals, meaning if we have white on our mask, it's revealing that filter or adjustment onto that particular area. And then if we have black, it's concealing it from that particular area. So let's just close that up here and we'll view the photograph. And within any of these different filters that you apply, you can modify them by going in and modifying the particular sliders within them. So in dynamic contrast, we have the different sizes of texture and detail. I can add in some, some small texture and you can see it modifies those really small micro details within the scene. So I can modify these different sliders within the filter, or I can use different presets that are at the top and in this more menu of each filter. Let's just choose Surreal. Surreal is a bit intense, but I do want you guys to be able to see sort of the difference between the before and the after. So if we turn this off and on, you can see it's strictly targeting that animal and it's not modifying anything else within the photograph. Now let's modify the background. So we've modified the foreground. We've modified the sub, or at least we've modified the subject that's in our foreground. Now let's modify the background and the foreground around our subject here. Now we can of course do the same thing. We can add a filter and then we can target that natural ground background there. Or let me show you another way that you can do it. I'm just going to hit Z on my keyboard. That's just going to grab my zoom tool so I don't have my brush uh, there, but all I'm going to do is head over here to the tool well, and I'm going to select this super tool. It's the super select AI tool. You can also grab it by hitting K on your keyboard. So I'll just hit K on my keyboard to select that. And now with this tool, all I have to do is hover over different sections or objects or environments or subjects within my photograph, and it will highlight them. And then I can select them just as I did in the filter menu before. You can say I have that blue around the background now. And then I can right click and by right clicking, it will pull up my adjustment menu and also all of the different filters I can apply to my photograph. I think it would be great to add in just sort of a dark glow into the background. So let's just head over here and we'll choose this darker preset. And in the glow filter here, it's gone ahead and mask that area there. 
Remember, white reveals and black conceals. And it's added on that darker preset within that glow filter, which the glow filter adds on sort of a blurry glow into the background. And it's, it's nice for these particular images where you already have a bit of blurriness to them. So if I turn this off and on here, it's really doing a nice job of just modifying that background slightly and making this animal really pop out of the scene there. So let's again just hit the backslash key on our keyboard to view the original. So this is the original. And this is after, with just a few modifications here. Let's just add one last modification. And I'm actually going to apply this modification to the entirety of the image. And I'm just going to add a nice vignette so that we can sort of dim down the area around our animal and we can make a nice uh, sort of portrait out of our wildlife photo. So in the vignette filter, like I was saying earlier, you can choose any of these different presets or you can modify the sliders. I'm going to choose this big softy preset. It's a really popular one within the vignette filter and it works really well to sort of dim down those corners and really make that center pop. Let's just turn this off and on. And it's looking great. Let's just use this positioning option there. I can select that right there. And then I can drag the vignette around to ensure that it's sort of spotlighting the area that I want it to. So now that we've modified the image, let's just export it. You know, we've created this awesome piece of art. Why not go and export it and share it to our friends and family or to social media or whatever it may be. The easiest way to export is just to head down to this export option here. You can select export. This will pull up your export drawer. And inside of the export drawer here, let's just focus on this export options section. And in the export options, we have our naming, which we can use to modify the name of our export. I'm just going to rename this one wildlife after. And below that, we can modify the sort of numerical end of the name, if you will. So if you're modifying groups of photographs or more than one, you can add a token and you can add a sequence number. And this will help to create a sequence so that you have you can have multiple different images with the same name. So then we have destination here. I typically use ask when exporting. So I'll use this folder option to choose ask when exporting and that will pull up my computer's finder and I can choose wherever I want that photo to go into. And then below that, what I typically do is I'll choose show in finder. That way it will open up my computer's finder or navigator to show me that the export is complete and I can view my image. Below that, we have file type, and I'm just going to modify the file type into a JPEG because I'm going from a raw image. I want to then process that into a JPEG that I can easily share. So then below that, we have resize. And what I can do here is I can resize to a specific dimension or I can resize a specific edge. And I can also modify the width, height, megapixels, or I can modify just the percentage here. So what I'm gonna do is just modify the percentage there. And I think, Maybe just 75% of the original value is going to be fine there. And I'm just going to use a resolution of 96, which works really well for web stuff. Let's just use actually 50% there. Get a nice lower estimated file size. So I think everything looks good. If you're looking to add on other things such as sharpening, adding on metadata, or you wanna add on a watermark, those can be accessed down here at the bottom and you can just select show and you can enable them and then you can modify from there. So I'm just going to turn that off. Everything looks good up here. Let's just choose export. Now it's asking me where I want to export this into. So I'll just export that into that folder we were looking at earlier. And now inside of the browse module again, you can see I have two of those same images. One is the raw file and then the other is this after image that we just modified. 